It seems like an inevitability, but Amazon finally did it. They made a TV. After years of making the Fire Stick that has smartened up many a television, Amazon decided to just provide the entire package with their own panels. And after years of proving that the first party branded products are really nothing to sleep on, these new televisions are definitely worth a look. What you see behind me is the entry level model of the entry level lineup, the 4 series TV, a set that is super affordable but manages to provide quite a bit of value. So let's take a look at it. This is Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here's what worked and what didn't with the 43-inch Amazon 4 Series 4K TV, powered by MediaTek, who are also the sponsor of this video. MediaTek powers this and many different Amazon products, bringing their chipsets to multiple categories of tech. You may already know MediaTek for their smartphone processors, which recently have been getting a high boost with the Dimensity lineup. But recently at their MediaTek Summit, the chipmaker committed to bringing more experiences to more categories of tech, with recognizable names for each new product. In the case of smart TVs, we're talking about the Pentonic 2000, which is a 7 nanometer processor that can power every high-end feature that televisions may bring to the living room. Now, to be clear, the 4 Series TV you're seeing in this video is not sporting a Pentonic 2000, but it is powered by a MediaTek chip that provides a smooth experience and helps power the panel that I'll be talking about throughout this piece. And you know what, given the price of the television, the 4 Series continues MediaTek's long-standing desire to democratize tech by making it accessible, affordable, and still highly enjoyable. So thanks again to MediaTek for sponsoring this video, and let's see how that all factors into this Amazon 4 Series 4K television. I have to start this off with the main selling point of this television, the price. I will go more in depth with why this is a big deal later, but I have to say that a 43 inch television that is under $300, honestly, it's pretty sweet. This makes the 4 series television an easy choice for anyone who might be in a small space like a dorm or a studio apartment, but with a little creativity, it can also be a good choice for some other applications like maybe using it as a second monitor as I did for a little while here at my desk. It certainly helps that I took advantage of the smaller size of this TV and put it on an easel stand, making it easier for me to move from one place to another. Most of the time though, it is the tech home base of my living area that is just over there here in my office. Taken just as a television, that level of value is something you can't just brush off. And since it is a smart TV with 4K resolution, it is a super competitively priced unit. You do have to remember that the price basically means that the simplest parts of the television viewing experience are really what it prioritizes. This remote right here is really easy to understand, right down to the obvious A word button up top and the four streaming services represented down below. As far as buttons are concerned, there is just one button on the bottom underneath the fire logo and LED indicator on the actual TV set. Now the television isn't going to be flashy at all given the low-cost plastic materials and the black bezel around the image is fairly thin, but I have seen thinner. Again, a little accessorizing will go a long way and this easel stand <laughs> made this a much more attractive living room centerpiece than it might have looked with those V-shaped legs that come in the box. You know the kind, they come with basically any general television. One of the simple but effective choices that were made in this television is the high resolution and pretty good color reproduction. I've done some television content in the last year or so, so I will admit to being spoiled by the huge screen sizes, but I was still interested in this 4 series because it's a low cost television that still provides 4K HDR. And for all the kinds of content that I've been viewing and enjoying on here, I found the image to be quite good. Without Dolby Vision and local dimming on here, it's obviously not going to be a real top tier performer, but personally, I've been satisfied with the contrast ratio and the colors in this VA LED panel. But let's not forget that the panel is powered by a MediaTek SoC, in which the color engine is providing this good experience. That way, the MediaTek processor is able to give this kind of experience for a very affordable price. That last bit I said is significant though. A VA panel has good quality when you're looking at it straight on, but once you move even just a little bit off axis of the optimal viewing angle, the saturation and the contrast suffer pretty quickly. That is a characteristic of the panel, but the processor, like those made by MediaTek in televisions like this, can also provide software that has viewing angle compensation, so there are ways of mitigating this nuance. However, I will admit that when the television is over there in the living room area while I'm here at the work desk, I'm just enough off axis at times that I do notice the losses. And it's not like you get a ton of options for really customizing the viewing experience. We'll talk about the greater fire software interface later, but as far as television settings are concerned, it's pretty bare bones. What you see is essentially what you get. Once you hit the settings button right here, it appears down here in the corner and you get just a handful of picture modes with some simple sliders for like saturation, contrast, sharpness, and smoothening. 
The lack of calibration settings and color customization would hurt more if the image quality was inherently bad, but thankfully that's not the case here. Speaking of the settings menu, I do appreciate the easy to access sleep timer a lot. My fellow people out there who sleep with something in the background can back me up on that. On the back along the right side, there's a pretty good selection of ports, including a bunch of HDMI ports, one of which has eARC so that you can put stuff like soundbars into it. And there's even an Ethernet port. One thing I personally really enjoy is the 3.5mm headphone jack, which routes any and all content that is on the television to the connected speaker or headphones. Not only does this simplify audio options for some people, but it's also a nice place to put, let's say, a long headphone cable for things like game streaming or recording. Console capture card people know what I'm talking about. So all those HDMI ports means that any console or even computer that you want to plug in can be supported. But you have to remember that this television is meant to be affordable yet simple. So this VA panel that is meant to be viewed straight on isn't going to get certain things like anything over a 60 hertz refresh rate. That's totally fine for everyday viewing and playing. I mean, you have all of the different streaming services here. But those of you who want that high refresh rate gaming just won't get it here. That's not to say you shouldn't put a PS5 or an Xbox Series X on here, but given the spec sheet, Personally, I prioritized putting my Switch dock and my Series S on here instead. I'm not a competitive player, so it's not like the refresh rate or things like AMD FreeSync are totally needed for my casual gameplay. And if enjoyment is really all that you're looking for in, let's say, general gameplay, let's just say Forza Horizon 5 was a joy to start using this television. So bringing all of that affordable enjoyment together is the software, and since this is an Amazon product, you know that Fire TV is at the helm. Honestly, this is one of the best parts of the experience, because while there are plenty of other smart television interfaces out there, I have to give the Fire TV software props for being smooth to use, easy to navigate, and chock full of all of the different streaming services that you might want on your smart TV anyway. Of course, if you're an avid user of the Amazon Prime content services, they'll work beautifully on a Fire TV like this. The 4 Series serves as a great gateway into all that Prime video and its different network partners can offer. Actually, all of that stuff, including the network partners, are actually adapted into a channel surfing experience that you can access by hitting this TV icon in the middle. In my case, all I really have is stars in my Prime video add-ons, but it's still pretty great to see them like an old-school channel guide that I can pop over to when I think I have nothing else to watch. Not that such situations happen very often at all, because from Netflix to YouTube to Peacock to Twitch, there's a sheer abundance of possibilities when it comes to the content enjoyment on the 4 series. So the TV gets massive points for being a decent canvas that is elevated by a great software experience. It's at this point that I'll actually get off of the 4 series for a little bit and bring the Fire TV interface to any other television courtesy of the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. If you already have another TV but you want that Fire experience with all the apps and streaming services that it provides, the Fire Stick still stands as one of the best ways of adapting any non-Fire TV into one. You see the words 4K Max on the box there, uh, and that is significant. Not only does it support all of the 4K resolution content that is out there and any Dolby enhancements in both video and audio if the television supports it, but there's also the connectivity, which is at an all-time high with the support for Wi-Fi 6 built right in. While unfortunately it still sticks to a micro USB connection for its power, at least the cable and the power adapter are included in the box, and once you plug it in, you never have to worry about fiddling with it again. Also, the remote is almost identical with the 4 Series TV I'm focusing on, with the Echo Voice capabilities included. If you do happen to have a television that you're already happy with, but you want to get some of these extra software things that I'm kind of praising right now, well, the Fire Stick has been and still is one of the best ways of doing that. This blue button at the top is still significant because everything that Amazon's assistant capabilities might bring to an Echo device come to the 4 Series TV as well. Simply hold down this button and say any query and this TV and anyone that has a Fire Stick installed will then open apps or do quick searches and control smart home items that you might have set up. Actually, since I have a moment here, why don't I try to control this Echo Glow using the TV? Turn JV Glow to green. Hey, there you go. <laughs> and you know what? Even without your input, the television brings the Echo experience in other ways because you still get the notifications popping up in the bottom corner of the screen. I was literally typing out this script in the living room area while watching G4 TV, and I was notified that a few of my Amazon Prime packages arrived. As a matter of fact, it happened in the middle of me filming this video as well. But recently at their MediaTek Summit, the chip maker committed to... It's pretty cool, honestly, and it adds more to the idea that the television can be the base station, and in my case, it kind of totally is. 
I have to say, it's really hard not to like a television that manages to bring a few really well done key experiences for such a low price. At $269, a price that is sure to see discounts and sales quite often like on Black Friday, this is one of the easiest TVs to recommend if you're trying to save some money but you're an avid consumer of Amazon Prime content. Hell, if you're deep in any of the other services, they're all supported here as well. Viewing experiences might require a straightforward approach, and gamers won't benefit from those overachieving features that some other TVs might have, but when you price a panel for simplicity, you do have to measure your expectations. What I like about the 4 series is that it's a highly accessible look into what might be the future of smart TVs, that the software is smooth and potentially robust, going beyond viewing and maybe even moving into game streaming. I mean, I barely even touched upon that. Luna is supported on here, and I'm sure other game streaming services could be supported on TVs like this, powered by processors that can tackle those higher experiences. And since Amazon outfitted this TV and its Fire Stick TV 4K Max with all the A-word and Echo capabilities, it's not a stretch to make this the center tech hub of, let's say, the office or a living room of a techie like me. With MediaTek committing to push the capabilities of televisions, TVs are becoming more than just a canvas. In fact, they can become the command center. For more on smart televisions like the Amazon 4 series that you just watched me talk about, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Sound off by hitting that like button and by also dropping a comment down below. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody. I left my tea in the living room area because I was watching TV on this when it was over there. I brought it over for the video. Anyway, my tea's over there. Enjoy your tea, everybody.